Sahex Sphere. Rules. Chess moves only unless notified. If a pawn reaches the opponent's character's home line, it becomes a queen piece or retrieves all captured pieces. I don't see any pawn or I don't see any locks, so I'll free them all. Checkmate laws acclable. Force king to move or king be blocked within the next move. King cards activate afterwards. Character pieces. Pawns are not characters. Character pieces. Pick up and use cards. One at a time at any time. On both moves. Mine or yours. Characters are limited to the cards they pick up as specified. I.e. they put them in their own individual hands. The only way they can change when you can move cards around is to get in a firing line of your character to the one you're handing it to. And then instead of moving, you move the card. Kings can move up to two spaces at a time. And one and in one move any direction. Able to leap over occupied spaces. Queens can move as many spaces as needed in a solid line in any direction that isn't blocked, including around the sphere, until the target or a filled space. Bishops all move like regular chess. Knights all move like regular chess. Rooks move like all regular chess. Cards. Cards are placed in the 32 open spaces on the chessboard at the beginning of the game in random order before the game begins. Cards can only be used by the character pieces that pick it up and used against those in the line of firing sight. I.e. their cards... Either cards can be used during your move or your other move as a counterattack on your opponent's turn. Affects any character piece or pawn in range. After you play your card, it goes into your side's graveyard. There are three types of cards. Character cards. Card are card changer suits. Three magician cards and three dragon cards. These, whoever holds the any one of these six cards, uh, is able to use magic. Any of the magic cards. Either side can wear either suit, so I can have a magician and a dragon. That doesn't. Magic cards come in three types: magician spells. Only be can, you, can be used by magicians or affect dragons. Dragon spells can only be used by dragons or affect magicians. Power spells give the character pieces special abilities as the card specifies. Card names and abilities. Power card. Power cards. The Warhog card must be played before anything on the board can attack, i.e. only able to pick up cards and prepare for war and to separate cards. White Lightning, leap away from an attacker. If there are no free spaces open, move or leap until safe from attackers. Ultimate. Resurrect a captured piece or character class card. Invisibility. Can't engage me. You can't engage the holder until I move from the space I played it. It can be occupied by multiple characters at that time. Thief card. Number one ability. Steal any card of the attacker's deck even the one he's attacking with. Or number two, roll a dice. The roll gives 
a number. Opponent must roll the same number or that number becomes the number of cards stolen from the opponent's deck or graveyard at random. I don't get to choose who. The Grim Order obtain two cards from either side or randomly from your opponent's graveyard. Black Pendant turns the character piece into a queen piece. Time Capsule freezes all the spaces around you until you move or get captured. Any piece that enters or is already in it becomes frozen. Those are all the power cards. The magic cards. Scarab Swarm. Instant death to any piece on board. You can't check or checkmate with it. And it makes the piece unable to come back without a card. A resurrection card. Stormship Apprentice is a character control. You steal an opponent's character piece. Remember, pawns are not characters. They cannot pick up cards. Forbidden Text Temple, temple Mount. Destroy either character class card. Not captured piece. Not capture piece. So it destroys the magician or dragon, but it leaves you where you are. This gets put into your graveyard, where most of the things you use go into yours, the things they use go into theirs. You know, um, the magic, excuse me, magic trial Ugarian secession course card. Opponent must checkmate in two turns. Can't capture any piece or kill any character class card. If you pass, if you pass, pawn or character becomes Yu-Gi-Oh. If you fail, opponent becomes the opponent becomes a Yu-Gi-Oh. The Yu-Gi-Oh is a master of game. It gains the ability of a second king or a queen you decide in the deck there are three character cards card character number one if you own one of these cards any one you're able to collect a pawn is able to collect cards if you hold two of these cards in any of your characters they don't have to be holding them just any one in your, if you have two characters with two of them, if holding any two of these cards, it gives your pawn the ability to use cards. So the first one is the pawn can collect cards and give them to your people. The second one allows your character the ability to use cards. If you have all three on your side, you are able to give pawns the ability to jump over a space. Magician magic. Magician magic cards. Dragon trumpet spells. Forces a dragon class to make two moves. Dragon blood blade. Destroy a dragon class card to their graveyard. Switcheroo. Trade equal number of cards from your deck or graveyard with your opponent's graveyard. Not hand. Dragon magic cards. Fire breath. Destroy magician class card to their graveyard. Exotic curse. Oh, wait. Exotic curse. Force a magician class to make two moves. Shining Lore. I'll leave that for you guys to decide. <laughs> uh, magician Class. If you hold all three Magician Class cards, they become the Wizard. Magician Class. Giving every card on your side, every character piece on your side. And turning them all unlimited. 
no more graveyards. So if you hold all three magicians, it makes all of your cards unlimited. Nothing goes into the graveyard and all of your graveyard comes out. But it also... Hold all three cards, you become the wizard, giving every card on your side to every character. So every card you have, every one of your pieces can use. So it, now it's a deck I'm holding, not my pieces. And I don't have to throw them away and can use any of them with any of them. When you have all three dragon classes, they all become a hydra giving the ability to move three times on each one of your turns, equaling either one piece moves three spaces, or three pieces move one space each. Or one piece goes two, and two goes one. It's really your decision. You get three moves every turn. Dragon class... And it makes all of the cards in your individual decks unlimited. No more graveyards, just like the wizard. So the three wizards gives you one deck for everybody. Unlimited. And the dragon gives three moves, however it sees fit. And their cards become unlimited but they don't become one deck. That, that's the difference. The magicians, I would hold my character's cards. The dragons still hold their own. Pawns. Pawns can move up to two spaces at a time and in any direction. They are unable to pick up or use cards. Pawns with the helmet are able to leap over occupied spaces. This is the Ugarian helmet. I'm sorry. Pawns can capture character class pieces. Pawns and character pieces. So pawns can capture anybody, but a regular character, one of your original eight, can't capture a dragon or magician. You have to have one to destroy one. Character class piece. No. Okay. In this game, in the cards, there are five games that are able to be picked up. You know, five card game cards. The Big Bang Box. You pick up this card. You don't move from its space. When you're captured, the Big Bang activates. Returning you to your home space. You keep your deck and obtain the Grave Robber. The Grave Robber revives your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard and steals them. The second game is Pick the Penny. Hide the penny in one to three slots. If the opponent finds it, you don't win. If the opponent fails, to re fails you receive the, char the Charm of Summons. The Charm of Summons allow you to cast spells from anywhere on the field. Remove this card only if pieces are captured. Goes into your graveyard. So you're able to, you know, not have to have line of sight anymore. The third game is Worldly Council. You pick A, B, or C. You pick one of these three cards. A is Tune Tech card. It turns any character piece into a queen. So any of your original eight can become a queen with this card. The Sunscape Apprentice card is a Grand Master, turns character piece into both Dragon and Magician classes. And C is a King of Cards. Obtain a secret new King with unlimited one 
deck team. Choose the king after your king is de checkmated or not. You know, you have to, as soon as you get checkmated, you have to show the card. You don't have to say who's the king, but you have to play to show the card and prove it's not game over. The fourth game is pick the skull card. If you pick the skull, if you pick it, you pick the card, now it's your time to pick the skull. If you get the skull, you obtain the wind sword. The opponent hides the skull in one to three bowls. If you choose it, you get the bonus wind sword upgrade. Oh, I'm sorry. If you pick the skull card originally, you get the sword. But then if you actually find the sword, then you get the upgrade, which is wizard's breath. The wind sword blows all the pieces in front off the field and they become captured. The wizard breath upgrades allows you to steal all of their stuff before they end up captured. Five is the disc game, the dice game, where this is an open field. It allows you to roll your cards, roll your dice. They have to match it. If not, you get that many number of things to do. You choose what it is. Whether you get a, if you get a three, you can move three pieces off the board. You can move two pieces off the board and steal one of, you know, it's three for three cards, three for three pieces, switch it around. This is the Hex Sphere. Welcome to my chess game.